friends, it's Sheila Keeter. I am the teacher for inclusion. And today we are going to do another episode, if that's what we would call this, or a video about graphic novels. So I have a pretty extended list um, of some of the graphic novels that I'm going to go over. And I just want you to keep in mind that I am a teacher and I do teacher videos. So these are graphic novels that um, are for young adults. Eighth, typically eighth through 12th grade. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Hey Kiddo. This is one of my favorites. I've talked about it multiple times. It is a story of healing. The author has written a book about himself, actually. He has a mom who has riddled with a heroin addiction and he goes to live with his grandparents and it talks about his journey through um, trying to recover from all of the painful events that he has dealt with as a child and continues to deal with as a young adult. It's a great story for healing. Um, Roller Girl is one of the newer ones. It is a beautiful story of friendship and it's also a story of perseverance. So it's a girl who goes to, she's a young girl who goes to a roller derby type camp and she gets her butt kicked all over the place, but she continues to work at it and persevere even when she wants to quit. And it's um, something that she ends up loving and enjoy, enjoys doing. It's also a story of how friendships can change and morph at a young age when interests change. And so it's a great story for students who are experiencing a loss of a friend or friendship or a change in friendship. Mouse, it's always really difficult for me to talk about any book that has to do with the Holocaust. It typically puts a knot in my stomach, but it's work, important work that we have to continue to do. I had a student, an eighth grade student about a year ago say he had never heard of the Holocaust and what was it? And I just went, what? Um, so we have to never let up on teaching students about the Holocaust and the book Mouse by Art Spiegelman is a great way to do that. Um, the mice are Jewish people, symbolic for Jewish people, and the cats are the SS. And um, it's just presented in such a way that captures the horror of the Holocaust but also keeps it just a little bit lighter than books like Night um, and Anne Frank's Diary. Although Anne Frank's Diary as a graphic novel is amazing. I don't have that one and I won't be talking about it today, but if you are interested in a book, a graphic novel for the Holocaust, Anne Frank is definitely um, one of the choices that I would make. It has stunning graphics. Here we have American born Chinese, and this is a Chinese student who is born in America and is very uncomfortable in his own skin. And this is such an imaginative, different book by Jean Luen Yang. Um, parallel to the story is a story about a monkey. Um, and they all, it all ties together in the end. But it's definitely a story that would appeal to probably a ninth, eighth, ninth grade um, male audience. Fahrenheit 451 is surprisingly my top seller, not the book, but the lesson for the book in my We Are Graphic Novels um, Teachers Pay Teachers shop. And I think the reason is, is because it takes the text and presents it in such a succinct way that you don't feel like students miss out on, on any of um, the important lessons in the book. And it is designed in such a way that is kind of like the traditional comic book style. And I think that is appealing to students. One of my other favorites, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to get on board with this because I have taught the novel for so many years and I love the novel and there's so much in it um, as you might know as a teacher, but this book is amazing. It doesn't leave out any of the important lessons or themes that need to be taught in the book and the graphics are stunning. Um, they just, everything is exactly how I imagined that it would be. We have The Giver. Um, the Giver 
is a another graphic novel, obviously. And in it, they present it where all the pages are very white. Um, and, and then they get darker and darker as Jonas experiences emotion and that sort of thing. Um, it's a great graphic novel read. And I think that if you're teaching the giver to sixth graders, which for some reason we've moved the giver from an older grade level to sixth grade, which I don't agree with, um, the way to go is the graphic novel. White Bird is, has my favorite graphics in it. This is another book about the Holocaust. This is a great one to teach or introduce um, students to the Holocaust or as a continuation about the Holocaust. Um, I know I keep saying the graphics are stunning in other books, but take a look at this. It's just, it doesn't do it um, justice when you're looking at it on the camera, but the book is just, the graphics in it are amazing and beautiful. Um, it's a love story, but also a story of terror clearly because it's about the Holocaust, a girl who loses her parents and has to live in a barn in order to survive and the brave people who take care of her to make sure that she does stay alive. And some of them lose their job, their lives, not jobs, lives um, at, at cost for hiding her. Dragon Hoops by Jean Luen Yang. He also is the, the author of American Born Chinese. This is such a great read. I am not a fan of basketball, not at all. But when I put this book down at the end, I had a new complete appreciation for basketball. Um, it's about a teacher who writes a book that is about the basketball team and it, he works at a private school and it, it has all the different struggles that the team members go through. Um, and it talks, it has a lot of themes, um, camaraderie type themes in it. The one thing that I would mention, just in case this is a deal breaker for you, is that there is brief moments in it when it talks about a coach, a prior coach who was accused of molesting um, a boy at the school at some point in the past. So if that's a deal breaker for you, I just wanted to mention that because I would hate for you to purchase the book and spend a lot of time on it and then get halfway through and see that. I personally would face it head on and be very careful how I presented it. Um, I would do it even more so if I worked at a Catholic college, but that's just, that's just me. I get into trouble sometimes. <laughs> Um, Surfside Girls is a really fun read. I would say you could take this up to, it's more of an elementary school read, but you could take it up to sixth graders or even struggling seventh graders. It's a book about friendship and two girls who surf as a pastime and one of them bumps her head and ends up in this underworld, not underworld, but underwater where she finds a bunch of ghosts who, um, are about to lose their land and she takes action and helps them to save it. So it has fun graphics and it's, it's a very fun and exciting read. And if you're talking about action in the classroom, like um, protests and that sort of thing, it's a good read for elementary school. Edgar Allan Poe, this is a great book. If you have students and we all do who love scary stories, and then to make it even better, the scary stories have scary graphics in them. It just, it's one of the layers, I would say equal layer of Edgar Allan Poe being genius. And then also the graphics um, are extremely graphic, no pun intended. This is about the Red Death, which gives the pandemic a whole new um, perspective of our pandemic versus ones from the past. Um, so Edgar Allan Poe, it's genius. It has most of his text. Nothing seems like it's lost. 
um, from text to graphic novel, it seems like the only thing that there is is gain in that graphic novel. What It Is by Linda Berry. This is extremely creative and different. She has kind of a childlike mind, and I mean that in the most respectful of ways. Um, she has a bit of a childlike mind where most adults are not able to go back and recreate, um, recreate that. But I would use this for kids who are almost advanced or gifted level. Possibly, I mean, there's so much in it. You could use it for anything, for any level. Um, it is almost overwhelming how much there is in it, but don't let that deter you because you could take a small section and do a creative writing assignment. I have a creative writing assignment that I sell on Teachers Pay Teachers, as well as a poetry assignment on Teachers Pay Teachers under the Teacher for Inclusion shop. So let me just give you a couple examples. Where do we keep bad memories? We put them in containers. What kind of containers? Did you ever have a toy that scared you? Write the name of the story, then write hap what happened to you. So it really takes you back to your childhood. There's, it's kind of creepy at times, but um, kids love that. So that is What It Is by Linda Berry. She also has a second what it is. One is um, focused more on poetry and the other is focused more on creative writing. I wanted to mention two books that I would not teach. And I, the reason I decided to include these is because I was excited to read them and I ordered them and paid for them and then realized, oh, this isn't appropriate for um, even the high school level. This is young adult um, college level. I mean, it is high school level but not something that we can really teach. So Ghost World is one that I would not use in the classroom. Um, the first picture is a girl holding up her middle finger. And then the third line is, I hate this fucking magazine. So if you're thinking about ordering this and reading it, um, knock yourself out if it works for you. But I just wanted to let you know. And the other one is Kusama, Kusamo. I don't have a copy of it. I borrowed it from a friend. Um, I wanted to buy it because it has such a beautiful cover on it. But one of the topics in it is orgies, um, orgy parties. And so that is not something I would recommend teaching in the classroom. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and that's all I have for today. Uh, I have a blog. I've done like 25 of these videos and I haven't mentioned, I've only mentioned once that I have a blog and it is Teacher for Inclusion and it has all things about teachers. So if you ever wanna look up Sheila Keeter, Teacher for Inclusion, there is a blog um, on all teachery type things and teaching. And then I also have a Teachers Pay Teacher shop, which um, is the Teacher for Inclusion. And I have another Teachers Pay Teacher shop, which is We Are Graphic Novels. And so if you're interested in teaching graphic novels, those are all graphic novel lessons. And I even have an African-American novel study shop, um, which has all literature that is African-American, which is another passion of mine. So I just wanted to mention that, and I hope that you learned something new about some of our graphic novels and that you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.